Physiologic Mechanisms of Diuretics by Lara Konovalov, Kelly Christensen, and Caitlin Betcher. This is Medical Physiology 3, and here are the objectives. We're going to start with some general physiology. Here are the basics. Blood flows through the kidney and passes into the glomerular capillaries located in the cortex of the kidney. These capillaries are highly permeable to water and electrolytes. Glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure drives the water and electrolytes out and into Bowman space and into the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule is where sodium, water, and bicarbonate reabsorption occurs. As the tube moves deeper into the kidney and into the medulla, it forms the loop of Henle. Because the medulla is very hyperosmotic and the loop of Henle is permeable to water, water is reabsorbed, concentrating the urine. The loop of Henle re-enters the cortex as the ascending loop. The ascending loop is impermeable to water, but has a co-transport system to reabsorb sodium, potassium, and chloride. From the ascending loop, the urine flows into the distal convoluted tubule and into the cortex, which is also impermeable to water and another area of sodium transport. The tubule becomes the collecting duct in the renal medulla, and then the renal pelvis, where it joins the other collecting ducts and exits the kidney as the ureter. The distal portion of the distal convoluted tubule and the proximal portion of the collecting duct have a transporter that reabsorbs sodium in exchange for potassium and a hydrogen ion. Its activity is dependent on tubular concentration of sodium. More sodium in the tubule results in a greater reabsorption of sodium and excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions. This transporter is also regulated by aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineral corticoid hormone secreted by the adrenal cortex. An increase in aldosterone will also stimulate reabsorption of sodium and increased loss of potassium and hydrogen ions in the urine. Water is reabsorbed through the collecting duct through pores regulated by antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone is released by the posterior pituitary. ADH increases the permeability of the collecting duct to water, resulting in more water reabsorption and a more concentrated urine. And here is a picture schematic of the nephron and what I've just explained. In summary, first there is glomerular filtration, where most of the water, salts, glucose, and urea are forced out of the glomerular capillaries and into Bowman's capsule. Next, there is tubular reabsorption. In the proximal convoluted tubule, energy is used to reabsorb sodium ions and glucose, and water follows. In the descending loop of Henle, it is relatively permeable to water, but much less permeable to sodium, chloride, and urea, so water is reabsorbed. In the ascending loop of Henle, it is impermeable to water and highly permeable to sodium and chloride, and moderately permeable to urea. Sodium and chloride diffuse from the tubules into the interstitium. In the distal convoluted tubule, the more ADH in the blood, the more water that's reabsorbed. So ADH causes the cells in the distal convoluted tubule to become more permeable to water and create a more concentrated urine. Then there is tubular secretion. Limited secretion occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule, but it mainly occurs in the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts. Finally, there is water regulation. Water reabsorption by the descending loop of Henle is driven by the sodium chloride reabsorption by the ascending loop of Henle. Let's move on to some background of diuretic drugs. Diuretic drugs increase urine output by the kidney. This is accomplished by regulating sodium and can be done at different segments along the renal tubule. Combination diuretics are used to increase efficacy. Let's start with loop diuretics. Loop diuretics inhibit sodium potassium chloride co-transporters in the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Inhibition of this pump will increase the concentration of sodium in the distal convoluted tubule and decrease the concentration of sodium in the surrounding interstitium and less water reabsorption will occur in the collecting duct. This results in both sodium and water loss. 
there is also a significant increase in potassium and chloride excretion. This also reduces renal synthesis of prostaglandins, which increase renal blood flow. Next, we have thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics are the most commonly used diuretic. They inhibit the sodium chloride transporter in the distal convoluted tubule. Sodium and chloride excretion is increased, and the effect on sodium is small because most of the sodium has already been absorbed before reaching the distal tubule. Potassium excretion is increased due to the increase in sodium in the distal convoluted tubule. Uric acid excretion is decreased, and there is little effect on renal blood flow. Next, potassium sparing diuretics. These do not act directly on sodium transport. One type of potassium sparing diuretic antagonizes the action of aldosterone at the distal segment of the distal tubule, causing more sodium and water to pass into the collecting duct and be excreted in the urine. These do not produce hypokalemia like the loop or thiazide diuretics can. By inhibiting the aldosterone-sensitive sodium reabsorption, less potassium and hydrogen ions are exchanged for sodium by this transporter, and therefore less potassium is lost in the urine. Other potassium-sparing diuretics work directly on the sodium channels associated with the aldosterone-sensitive sodium pump, producing the same outcome. This mechanism depends on renal prostaglandin production and is often used in conjunction with a thiazide or loop diuretic to prevent hypokalemia. We also have carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These inhibit the transport of bicarbonate out of the proximal convoluted tubule. This leads to less sodium reabsorption and greater sodium bicarbonate and water loss in the urine. These are the weakest of the diuretics and seldom used in cardiovascular disease though their main use is in the treatment of glaucoma. And finally, we have osmotic diuretics. These cause water to be retained within the proximal tubule and the descending loop of Henle. They also extract water from systemic body compartments and increase renal blood flow. They also increase the excretion of all electrolytes. And here are our sources. Thank you very much for listening.